Hey guys, how's it going today? So I'm sure everyone's heard about the 7M lawsuit, like all the, um, I can't even think what I'm saying. I'm staring at Harry, so I'm like, what the hell am I trying to say? He looks like, honestly, he looks like a cross between Edward Furlong and River Phoenix. That's like the product of them too, if they had a kid, I swear. Anyways, so the new filings came out yesterday. So people with the smarts came out and read them and explained them because I'm no lawyer. <laughs> um, I'm with Nini on that one. It's better if other people do it. So I know that Joanne Cochran has uh, posted one last night about the filings. I still got to watch her video. And Nini just made one today, which was hilarious because I love her stance on it. Because Oh, my God. We're both laughing because <laughs> stuff it's just like oh my god oh it's good okay anyways so i'm showing you this because like it's in reddit and i'm like what the hell is this and even the person that posts is like what is this shit she certainly likes them young this is what she posted good morning that's it just a just this a picture of harry styles okay here's some comments she's trying to seem relatable and distract from the new seven them filings in my in my honest opinion I realize she's out of content, but this random shit is so obviously just filler because she has no content. It's just KJ doing her usual deflection and shields. We'll have more shields activated today. Her sons, her pets, toys, dinosaurs, her outside pool or patio picks. I feel like I may be missing a shield or two that she activates, especially after yesterday and the new court filings. I have enough weed. My house is clean. Another day where I can sit back and watch this spiral. <laughs> Perhaps she'll introduce her mom with dementia, go back to telling her cult story she stole. I need to clean the house today, but I'll definitely be checking in during my 420 breaks. I wish she'd give us a drunk live. Did you happen to see where 7M is asking what mind altering substances she uses and citing the relevance as proving she's not a journalist Am among other stuff? I snorted when I read it. Actually, I did too. I'm a snorter. It's like a family thing, but I did too. Uh, talk about being clean freaks. I see people like this, I think very cute. And ah, to be young again, like my kids. I want to make them cookies to remind them to take their coat when it's cold out. I'm just waiting to, for her world to come crashing down. She's a hot mess. She's having a midlife crisis, yeah. It, it is random. Yeah, this person's like, it's so random, it is. It's definitely deflection. <laughs> this is Katie's version of, oh look, a squirrel. Things are not going well for Krusty. I'm not, this is the I'm not bothered post. Yeah, these people are right, man. They're so right. Like they call it out every time. She does actually like them young. She's told us what she wants to do to young boys, which makes the sleeping arrangements in that house worrisome as fuck. Yeah. Uh, and also considering KJ said that she didn't feel comfortable changing her own son's diaper. Like what the hell's that? She has not showered in months, so she'll smell her blocks away. <laughs> He'll smell her blocks away. KJ, keep it for your spank bank, you gooper. Oh, my God. Oh, all right. I'm going to read you the two posts that Nini posted because they're the most, like, relevant ones here. Okay. So this one, she ended up, she's giving credit to Joanne Cochran for the screenshot. Yeah. Even Nini says it's going to be hard to deny that wine you were clearly drinking in those Instagram lives. The wine, um, the White Claws, these other fruity drinks that she would pick up. Okay, so this is page 8 of 10. It says, request 2. Plaintiffs requested defendants admit if they have ever used controlled substances, including alcohol, while discussing plaintiffs on Instagram. Shit. Defendants objected as alcohol is not a controlled substance and to relevance. Really, Katie? You're getting hammered on a live shooting your mouth off about people you don't even know and without any proof and accusing these people of abhorred, awful things, just like you just did to Dion DiRico. I mean, yeah, most are actually, there's not one journalist I know or anybody else I know, or they know, I would imagine, who gets drunk on Instagram and shoots their mouth off and claims to be a fucking reporter, Katie. While alcohol may not be a controlled substance in a criminal sense, in the sense that it is a mind and behavior altering substance, which is regulated, the... Colloquial, that's probably wrong, use of the term shall include any mind-altering or potentially mind-altering substance, including alcohol. The question is relevant as defendants claim they are a journalist and use of any mind-altering substance acceptance is relevant to defendants claim they are a reporter. 
<laughs> Further, this entire lawsuit is based on defendants' actions. The mental state of defendants and any substances they have taken in making statements against or about plaintiffs is relevant to this lawsuit. Therefore, defendants must answer this request. Failure to do so by the below prescribed deadline will be considered an admission pursuant to Minnesota RC, the civil P36.101. That is, yes. You know what I mean? I'm sitting there going, yeah, finally, finally. Good call around on her drunkness. She is a drunk. Okay, so Nini posted this too. <coughs> her interrogatories. Interrogatory two. Plaintiffs requested defendants identify each person they are aware of who may have knowledge or is likely to have knowledge of discardable information relevant to the facts and circumstances of the claims in this lawsuit. Defendants objected on the basis of journalistic privilege pursuant to the Minnesota stat, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. Defendants are not a journalist and the court has not found defendants to be a journalist. <laughs> Oh, please be a drunk life. Many of her social media posts involve her consuming alcohol to the point of slurred speech while discussing her personal opinions on topics like religion. This is not typical of journalist reporting for the New York Times or even a local news source like the Star Tribune. <laughs> oh, this is lovely. Further, even if defendants were journalists, they are not precluded from identifying anyone with whom they are or away may have information. Oh, my God. This is great. Okay, now I'm going to go over to Balls because Balls had something I wanted to show you guys, too. These guys are all on the ball. Oh, yeah. I wanted to show you this real quick. So, I did the, the video that KJ made yesterday. I ended up making my own video on it. Look how many times she's changed her title for that bit, this video. Gwendolyn Brown says she hates me. Starts Katie Joy hate page. Please stop lying, Gwendolyn Brown. I'm famous. Sister Wife's star Gwendolyn Brown hates me. Starts a hate page about me. I'm Sister Wife's famous. Sister Wife's star Gwendolyn Brown hates me. And starts a hate page about me. Christine Brown's daughter Gwen hates me over this. My response to Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn's Patreon. Christine Brown's daughter Gwendolyn hates me and wants to talk to me. But she blocked me. I'm confused. Sister Wife's... Holy fuck, Katie. Sister Wife's Gwendolyn Brown is probably going to sue me for this video. Sister Wife's Gwendolyn Brown or Cody Brown are probably going to sue me for this video. Sister Wife's Gwendolyn Brown or Tails C are probably going to sue me for this video. One, two. That's eight times she changed the title on that fucking video. Wow. And tell me you're unhinged without telling me you're unhinged. That's, I, wow. Like, KJ is old enough to be Gwen's mom. She's in her 40s and she's sitting here bullying a young girl to prove that she's right when she's not even right. She blocked you, Katie. Get the hell over it. Okay, I wanted to show you, uh, This is, so I'm gonna, I don't know if I need to read these or not. Uh, okay. So plaintiffs are entitled to an order compelling discovery responses from defendants. Plaintiffs served its first set of interrogatories and first set of requests for production of documents to defendants on May 11th, 2023. Collectively, the discovery. Defendants served their answers to the first set of discovery on June 12th, 2023. Plaintiffs served their discovery deficiency letter upon defendants on July 7th, 2023. Counsel for plaintiffs have made a good faith effort to meet and confer with defendants to secure the requested information prior to making the motion to compel disclosures from defendants. Defendants' responses to discovery were deficient in 23 folks. 23 requests from production of documents and 36 interrogatories. Defendants failed to provide even one page, one, in response to plaintiff's request for production of documents. The specific challenges to discovery are outlined as follows. 23 requests, okay, of documents and 36 interrogatories. That's like not even, I've never even heard of that. That's insane. All because she thinks she's all because she thinks she can say relevance and she thinks that she's a journalist and she has journalistic privilege. I don't fucking think so. Request for production of documents. So request one. Plaintiffs requested all documents which relate to any claims and defenses alleged in the litigation between the parties. Defendants objected 
as impermissibly vague and protected by journalist journalist privilege pursuant to Minnesota stuff. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Plaintiff's request is not impermissible vague, impermissibly vague. It is so specific as to requesting documents which relate to this lawsuit and defendant's defense in the same. Further, a journalist privilege pursuant to Minnesota stat, blah, 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 does not allow anyone, even if they are a journalist, to withhold all information in a lawsuit for defamation, Katie. Defendants have failed to move the court for a designation as a journalist prior to this response to discovery. So she hasn't even proved that she is a journalist still. She's just running her mouth because she misheard the judge or actually thinks the judge, the old judge, said she was a journalist when they didn't. <laughs> they said she was plausible. Yeah. As defendants have failed to protect any legal privilege as a journalist in the past years, year of litigation, it is improper to use an alleged journalistic privilege as a shield. <laughs> Stupid ass. What is it? As a sh shield from legal reasoning, therefore, defendants must disclose all documents they referred, referenced in responding the interrogatories. Okay, request please. Three, it says, plaintiffs requested all documents referenced in responding to request for admission. Then it's responded, they linked digital copies and posts. Really? Plaintiff's rationale <laughs> for defendant's deficiency in disclosure as it relates to responding to the documents referenced and responding to the request for admission is the same as that of request two. Request four. Plaintiffs requested defendants produce all social media posts. Defendants have made regarding 7M Phil's Incorporated or their associates. Defendants did not object to this request, but instead... They do not know what affiliates means and that defendants have asked plaintiffs to provide copies of plaintiffs posts already in his possession. Oh my God. So she doesn't know what it means, but yet she's a journalist, right guys? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> like this reads like they're talking to a moron. As to the latter, defendant's discovery request to plaintiff not relevant to defendant's disclosures. All of plaintiff's claims in this lawsuit are based on defendant's posts and associated behavior. As the entire lawsuit rests on defendant's social media posts, defendants are required to provide the same. Despite plaintiff sending defendants a, per per a preservation letter, defendants have detected, sorry, deleted, archived, or taken down many of their posts regarding plaintiffs. And we've all seen that. She's done that with every single every single case that she's ever been in, even with Toddy, she deleted a lot of shit. I don't know if you guys remember, um, even Emily D, B, D. Baker saying, um, what that means is don't delete your shit. That was her exact words, actually, I believe. Defendants have further continued to post about plaintiffs and this lawsuit on their social media platforms. Plaintiffs do not have access to every post defendant has made about them, but each post defendants make regarding plaintiffs and this lawsuit are, re are relevant to this lawsuit. As to defendants claim, they do not know what affiliates means. The dictionary definition of affiliates is officially attach or connect a subsidiary group or a person to an organization. Oh my God, this is hilarious. As counsel for the defendants has repeatedly stated, she has decades, get this, decades of experience in litigation stating they do not understand what the word affiliates means or how it is con connected to 7M Films Incorporated is not persuasive. <laughs> Further, defendant's objection to affiliates does not preclude discovery of information as it relates directly to plaintiff's defendants must answer the request in full. Do you hear that, Katie? You're not getting away with this. You have to provide what they ask and you have to do it now. All right, there was one more thing here. Request five. Plaintiff's request was the same as request four, but with regard to plaintiff Robert Shin, defendant had the same response as request four. Plaintiff's rationale is the same as that of request four. Defendants must produce copies of all social media posts they have made about Robert Shin from January 2020 to the present. That's three years, Katie. Okay, so everything you read that everything that you have put up, you have to give them. And guess what? Deleting doesn't matter. The internet is forever. You're the idiot says that, but yet you're fucking dumb enough to think it, that what? Nobody's going to have your shit. Of course, everyone has your shit. Everyone's giving it to them because they want to help them because you're a piece of shit. You're an awful human being. You, you don't deserve a platform at all. 
So request six, plaintiffs requested all social media posts regarding Melanie Wilking and or her affiliates from January 2020 to the present. Defendants objected as Melanie Wilking is a non-party. Wow. Defendants' objection did not include any legal reasoning for how seeking information relating to a non-party to a lawsuit is valid objection to discovery. Really? Information related to non-parties is discoverable information. There you have it. It's coming from a judge and the courts. Defendants' post indicate that she had contact with Melanie Wilking and others associated with Miss Wilking in relation to her posting about the plaintiffs. And this is true. We've all seen it. She was trying to get a hold. She talked to the mother of those two sisters. She talked to Melanie. Yeah. As defendants' own statements have related Melanie Wilking to the core factual basis in this lawsuit of information and communications regarding her is highly relevant. Defendants must respond to this request. Do you hear that one, KJ? Request seven and eight. Plaintiffs requested the same as request four and five with relation to plaintiffs Miranda Derrick and James Derrick. Defendants' response was the same. Plaintiffs' rationale is the same as that of request four and five. Defendants must produce copies of all social media posts they have made about Miranda Derrick and James Derrick from January 2020 to the present. That's three years, Katie. Request nine. Plaintiffs requested defendants produce all drafts of social media posts defendants have made regarding <clears throat> 7M Films Incorporated. Defendants objected on the grounds of relevance. Um, you're an idiot, Katie. You can't do that. You're not a journalist at all. Oh, I can't wait till this is over and she loses. Honestly, guys. Defendants have engaged in a campaign of false information against 7M Films Incorporated almost exclusively, exclusively <laughs> consisting of posting to social media. All drafts, notes, communications, and other preparation materials are relevant to this lawsuit. Unposted or posted drafts are relevant as they may allow the court to glean information as it relates to the factual accuracy of the defendant's post as well as the intent of defendants in posting them further. The evidence of drafts, outlines, and other such documentation or information can be used to determine if defendants are considered journalists. <laughs> as the information is relevant to this lawsuit, defendants must disclose. Number 10. Plaintiffs requested defendants produce all drafts of social media posts defendants have made regarding Robert Shin. Defendants objected on the grounds of relevance. She's an idiot. All right, we need to go back because I want to show you something. This is why I really love Balls as well because she gets everything. She knows what's up. She works really hard at this. Actually, if you watch this, Balls, you should really start like a uh, buy me a coffee. I think you should do that. You deserve it with all this work you do because without you, you know... And a lot of you people, I wouldn't, especially even Llama Girl, even Nini, all you guys, I wouldn't have all this stuff. I'm Canadian, so I can't get this stuff. Our laws are completely different. Okay, so I'm going to show you this. So, she, so Balls is actually showing the shit that KJ has done to these people, okay? Mouth says, this is the second time that Miranda or an affiliated account have brought up that Miranda is either in danger or not safe. They blame Kelly for causing brands to not work with her because she hasn't denounced me. <laughs> wow, Katie. Except I'm not the only person that has reported this story. I found dozens of articles on the situation and numerous videos by other YouTube creators. Meanwhile, you're the one, Katie Joy fucking Paulson, who said you broke the story. You bragged about it. And that's the problem with you and with this you being sued, because that will be brought up. You can deny it all you want, but that's what you said. You started this horse shit. How would denouncing me change anything? What is the end goal here? I've heard that multiple production companies are working on a series about the situation. Huge companies. You mean the one that fucking told you you're not going to work with them at all? <laughs> or the other one that's not going to work with you? You mean Shiny Happy People? Or the 7M documentary? You mean those ones that don't want nothing to do with you? Those ones? The ones that you said you were actually going to be in and you're not? Yeah, that was great. How is one single person with a way smaller following truly the risk here? Okay, I'm going to tell you something. Every time KJ's in hot water, she talks about how she has such a small following. Now, when someone is actually right about her and telling something on her, like giving information about what Katie Joy said, done, or will do, or blah, 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 and actually has proof, and they're smaller than her, she will make that relevant. She's like, I've got more than you, blah, blah. Like, she's done that with so many different people. I have strong belief my opinion that Kelly and Dean did respond to her. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. This is how Katie tried to ruin 7M and Miranda and James Derrick. 
Is Sally Hansen Nail Products aware? I saw Miranda had an ad post of their products. Look at what she says. I mean, let's go with the fire emoji. Wow. Look at this shit. Internet, do your thing. Because they're wearing Forever 21 clothes. Forever 21 men. Are you fucking kidding me? And look what she says down here. It says, confirmed ad with Forever 21. Please pull this ad for Every 21 and stop supporting Robert Shin's cult. Robert Shin and 7M have a history of alleged forced labor under the guise of working for the gospel, i.e. Robert's bank account. And she's trying to deny this. She's trying to say that she didn't do this. She didn't get people to pull their sponsors from this group. And she actually did. They have lost thousands, millions because of this bitch. Look at the look at this one. What she's done to Jessa. Jessa Sewell posted a new video containing sponsored content from Native as a skin and body care brand. This company promotes an inclusive brand that accepts all people. I don't know if Native knows about Jessa's husband. Recently posting a video that was anti-LGBTQ in the video. He, he told people to pray away their gay. Wow. Look at this shit. A scentbird. This is KJ, okay? Talking to scentbird. Thank you for getting back to me. This is Alexi again. I'm glad that you came back or for the following up on this situation. I hope you're doing really well nowadays. After doing some investigation on my our part, my colleagues from the marketing team have informed me that the video of her collaboration with her will be taken down and we won't be working with her again. So she was removed from our affiliates a couple of days ago. I hope this helps to clarify. Please let me know if you have any other questions for me. In the meantime, I'll gladly answer you as best as I can. From Scentbird, affiliate from Scentbird. This is sick. She did it to Jessa. She's done it even with the Clippers. She did that with 7M. I mean, she doesn't stop. That is, you can't do those things and get away with it, Katie. You just can't. Anyways, that'll be it for me for today, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. And I'll be back tomorrow. Bye, guys.